My girlfriend Amanda and I have been together for four years, but I've known her for much longer. Amanda has two young, beautiful twin boys from a previous relationship. Although they're not biologically mine, I love and adore my boys with all my heart. They're the best things in my life and I'm lucky to be their father. For as long as I've known Amanda, I've known that she's very distant from her family. She doesn't speak to them or about them, and if she does mention them, it's to complain about how horrible they are. Her older sister, Sandy, is a bit of a sensitive topic for her. Growing up, Amanda was always compared to Sandy, which fostered a very unhealthy relationship between them. Sandy grew up spoiled, perfect and loved, while Amanda was rejected from her own family. To this day, Sandy still believes that she is the better sister. They do not talk. Sandy introduced Amanda to her ex-boyfriend Mike and baby father many years ago. I won't elaborate on the specifics, but Amanda's ex-boyfriend is a total piece of crap. He treated Amanda terribly and was very hot-tempered, aggressive and easily provoked. Nevertheless, Sandy, despite them not being together for years and Amanda having full custody of her children, believes that her ex-boyfriend is the perfect man to keep Amanda in check. At 8am, Sandy and Mike showed up at our house completely unannounced. Not only was I surprised to see them, but I was also surprised at how they found out where I lived, considering that I'd never told them before. Sandy said that she came to visit Amanda and her nephews. They claimed that they wanted to celebrate Amanda's birthday, which is in a month. The whole situation was highly confusing and slightly disorientating. I didn't feel comfortable letting them in, especially when Amanda wasn't home, so I refused and I told them to come back later. When I refused, they grew very agitated. They started to raise their voices and insist that they wait for Amanda, or at the very least, allow them to see my kids. I kept saying no and got so upset that I slammed the door and told them to leave. I assumed they would leave, but after five minutes, I could see them still waiting in my front garden. Finally, I told them to leave or I would call the police. They quickly left. Amanda has told me she's been receiving messages from random numbers, calling her horrible names and having a soft boyfriend. It's clearly from Sandy and Mike since she blocks them, but the messages are pretty mean. I was talking to a friend about this situation, and they told me that I shouldn't have meddled in Amanda's family affairs. I don't want to be the reason that Amanda is being harassed. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. This isn't about meddling or family dynamics. You were protecting the children from people who did not have custody and who did not have permission to be there. I bet they'd been watching the house and knew Amanda wasn't at home. I'm sure they were trying to get the kids and take them. Really, I've always started my birthday celebrations at 8am a month prior to my birthday. Not. Wonder if they had on birthday party hats to make it more convincing. Seriously, I would have done the same thing as OP. OP, but I'd suggest you document this and you both get a restraining order. I bet the sister is sleeping with the ex and wants to find problems at your house to report to CPS. I'd make sure everything is set up well and document everything. OP, wake up. They were there to plant drugs or similar in your home. Holy Hannah, is your friend useless? Document everything. Make a police report. Get a lawyer. File a restraining order ASAP. Get out ahead of this thing. My other thought was maybe they were there to kidnap the kids. Anyway, they were there to cause harm. Treat them like lava. Don't talk to them if they show up in the neighborhood. Alert your school, caregivers, etc. They were definitely not there to celebrate her birthday. This was exactly my thought. They were agitated just being told to wait until OP's wife was back because they knew she wouldn't let them in. I assure you what they were planning was no surprise party. Please heed this advice, report and document this and lawyer up. Get a restraining order. Please alert the school and any after-school activities that the kids are not to be released to their aunt or baby daddy. Just make sure these people do not have access to your kids. My 34 female brother Jack, 36, married my sister-in-law Amy, 27, about two years ago. One thing you need to know about Amy and me is that we are polar opposites. I'm very much an honest, blunt, tell-it-like-it-is gal. On the other hand, Amy is cheery, doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, and is a sensitive type of person. Amy is a preschool teacher and has been for about two years. I, on the other hand, am an NICU nurse. I work long hours, then overtime, and have to nurse the tiniest of humans back to health. It's stressful, but I still prefer to be an ER nurse, which is what I worked at until about five years ago. 
My being blunt with my overly sensitive patients was a no-go. I like my job, but it requires every type of skill in the book. On Friday, I was invited to Jack and Amy's house for dinner. After dinner, we decided that we wanted to watch a movie. Jack had told us to pick something out and that he would take a shower and be back in a few minutes, but not to start the movie without him. However, Jack had left the remote on the TV stand instead of giving it to one of us, and we were already sitting on separate chairs. And this is where this entire issue started. Amy asked me if I could get the remote. I replied that she was the one that was seated closer to the TV stand. Amy said that her feet hurt. I said mine did too. Amy said that she'd been on her feet all day. I said that I was on my feet all day as well. Amy said she was running around looking after kids. I replied that I'd been running around trying to nurse newborn babies back to health. Amy whined and asked me if I could just get up and get the remote because she had a grueling day. I replied that we both knew that if anyone had a more grueling day, it was me. Amy restated that we both have hard jobs. I told Amy that when it comes to the difficulty of our careers, educating kids and healing kids are on many different levels and that I could do her job, but she wouldn't be able to last a day in my shoes. Amy became defensive and upset and asked if I was trying to insult her. I said no, but instead I was just stating the obvious. Plus, she was the one who wanted to compare who had a harder day in the first place. Finally, Amy told me to forget about the movie and that I should leave. I tried to get her to change her mind, but she wasn't having it. Jack walked in as we were arguing, and seeing how upset Amy was in this situation, he agreed I should leave. Now Amy hasn't been answering my calls. Finally, I got a hold of Jack, and he called me an insensitive idiot for hurting Amy, insulting her intelligence, and downplaying the difficulty of her job. I tried to explain myself, but he bung up on me. Am I the idiot? I just gave her a hard truth about the reality of the differences between her job and mine, but maybe I could have been nicer about it. You couldn't cut it as an ER nurse, so you had to transfer somewhere where the patients couldn't understand their nurse was an idiot. You sound like you aren't good at being a nurse, so let's start there. You are the idiot, OP. For real, this can't be glossed over if I'm going to the ER, it's probably something serious, and I don't really feel that I need to lay in a bed and take harsh judgments while I'm in agonizing pain. And OP calls that overly sensitive? ER nurses are typically the least friendly nurses around, and OP couldn't even be nice enough to work in the ER. I don't understand how they're allowed to work with patients. You are the idiot. Honestly, I probably didn't have to read beyond. I am very much an honest, blunt, tell it like it is gal to get that decision because people who say that are always an idiot at the end of the day. You two are fighting over a remote control. Ironic since you both work with children that you were acting like children. But Amy acknowledged you both have hard jobs in different ways. You dismissed her completely. And to be honest, given your personality alone, I don't think you could handle being a preschool teacher, running around and wrangling dozens of children. How often do you need to be kicked out before you get the message that you need to work on yourself? This behavior made you a bad nurse and you were asked to work elsewhere. This behavior made you a bad guest and a bad sister-in-law and you were asked to leave. With you admitting both of these so freely, I have to assume this pattern has also played out in other contexts. Newsflash, you're the problem. About four months ago, I went to my cousin's bachelorette party and things got a little wild. She took a lot of pictures, including some spicy pictures of me. I asked her to delete them or crop me out as it would be awful if images like that were ever posted publicly of me for my husband and in-laws and she told me she would, but she never did. A month ago, my husband was sent one of those pictures and told the rest would be leaked if he didn't buy the rest from the person. Luckily, he could find out who was trying to blackmail him and the pictures have since been deleted. However, things have been tense with us ever since. I originally thought it was the cousin whose party it was and who took the pictures, but she swore it wasn't her. It turned out it was her sister, but I'm still angry at her for not deleting my pictures when I asked her to. A few days ago, we were both invited to a family dinner. She tried to talk to me and I ignored her because I'd already made it clear I didn't want to talk to her. She still cornered me and begged me to speak to her and told me she was sorry for not deleting the pictures when I asked her to, but she had no way of knowing this would happen. I told her I didn't care, still blamed her and wanted her to leave me alone. She ended up leaving the dinner early and now my family is upset with me for not giving her a second chance when it wasn't her who blackmailed my husband. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, so they'll gloss over the fact that her sister tried and failed to blackmail your hubby, like that isn't a felony? 
Opie, can't you report it to the police and forgive her after she has been charged and done time? Then you can give her a second chance after she's paid her debt to society. The million dollar question, I want to know why the heck she took those pics in the first place. She may not have used the pictures to blackmail your husband, but she was the one who took them and didn't delete them when asked to. Like it or not, she is responsible. If she hadn't taken the pictures, they wouldn't have been available to be used as blackmail material. I'm so sorry your family betrayed you. Your cousin's actions indirectly affected your relationship with your husband, breaking your trust and threatening to humiliate you publicly. You don't know if your cousin and her sister lied the entire time and they just continue to lie and gaslight after being discovered for blackmailing your husband. She can go kick rocks. It's not your job to make people who hurt you feel better about themselves. Your family can do the same if they don't like the fallout from her actions. I, 29, live with my pregnant fiancé Sarah, 27, and my cousin Mira, 18. To make a long story short, I've basically raised Mira myself since she was 4 and I was 15. Her parents are extremely negligent and when I was 20 she moved in with me. While she calls me by name and calls me her cousin, we basically have a father-daughter relationship. Mira is important to me. She didn't get along with Sarah at first, I think she just hated sharing my attention, but I thought they get along well now. Sarah and I have discussed Mira and her situation. While I knew Sarah thought independence was better, I personally think she should stay here while she goes to university. A few days ago, Mira came up to me crying and apologizing. She said she was sorry for being a burden and hurting me, for not realizing how I felt and that she would move out and everything. I had no idea what was going on and when I managed to calm her down, she basically told me that Sarah had talked to her. Apparently, she told her that she was old enough to move out and stop being a burden on me, that she needed to stop taking advantage of my kindness. I got pretty angry and reassured Mira that I loved her and wouldn't kick her out. I was furious and argued with Sarah about it. She thinks I'm letting Mira take advantage of me, that she's old enough to be independent. She thinks it's such an issue that Mira has referred to the baby as her little sister, that she's my cousin and I have an actual daughter coming so I can't keep coddling her. Basically, she thinks I'm spoiling her with all this, which is ridiculous. That she did it this way because I left her no choice. The whole just a cousin has made me angry. Even if not by blood, she is my daughter. I raised and loved her. Sure, I spent a lot of time, money and whatnot on her, but I would do that for any child I had. Our argument went terribly. I don't understand how she can see Mira as some leech I need to stand up to and that she did what had to be done. Mira was really happy I didn't feel that way and obviously hates Sarah now. Sarah and most of my in-laws obviously say she's right and I need to have appropriate boundaries. Our friends mostly agree with Sarah. Even my best friend told me that Sarah was right when I vented. Apparently I forgot my place and it's unhealthy. I really don't agree with them, but having so many disagree, especially my best friend, is giving me doubts. I want what's best for Mira while I personally want her to stay, if it is actually unhealthy, maybe Sarah would be right. Sarah definitely went the wrong way, but maybe I was wrong to not take some of the worries seriously. Not the idiot. Mira is in university. It's great that you're willing to let her live at home so she can get an education and hopefully not graduate with overwhelming debt. If she's in school and working towards supporting herself, that's a young adult worth subsidizing. I find it odd that you know Sarah well enough to propose to her, but had no clue how she felt about Mira or that she would go behind your back that way. I hate to tell you, but you knocked up the wrong person. Sarah is trying to kick out someone like a daughter to you. Would she be happy if you kicked out yours and Sarah's kid once the kid turns 18? No, probably not. Another thing I don't think you realize is how Sarah lied to Mira behind your back to get a result she couldn't have obtained from you. This is a crappy tactic, a breach of trust, and a foreshadowing for what will happen in your future. This is how she will act every time if she gets away with it now. Think about it, friend. Sarah is jealous, plain and simple. She wants all your attention on her and the baby in your cousin is getting in the way. I'm sorry, Sarah needs to grow up or get out. She doesn't get to come into your home and kick out your cousin whom you've raised. A woman like Sarah is dangerous. She will do whatever she has to get her way. I'm a teen female living with my mom, stepdad and younger half-siblings. My dad died nine years ago and my mom married Dave six years ago. 
My half-siblings are a pre-tween female, a young male child, a female kindergartner, and a male toddler. My mom and Dave call him my dad, they refer to themselves as my parents, but I only ever use his name and use his name in conversation with others. We've had so much therapy together to try and find a way forward, so I will call Dave dad, but it's not going to happen. My siblings have called me out for calling him Dave a lot in the last six months. I told mom she needed to talk to them and explain it because I will if they didn't. She told me I never talk to them about it because it's not my place, so we ended up in a fight over it. I've pushed for the last several months, but I had enough. So three days ago, they brought it up again, and the oldest told me I was being mean and rude and that we don't call our parents by their first names. So I sat the older three down and told them Dave is not my dad. My dad died, and my mom married Dave when she already had me. I even showed them a photo of my dad. They asked why I didn't call both dads. I said because I didn't want to. There was a pushback on it, which Dave overheard, then he and my mom got super angry, we fought, they said it was not my place and told me I had no right. My stuff was taken as a punishment, but I'm at a family member's house for a few days and they're letting me use the internet again. So, yeah, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Ask Dave if he dies, how quickly should his kids replace him? Ask your mom the same thing. Let's say she dies in a year. Can you call the next woman Dave Bang's mom? I'm sorry they won't respect your decision not to call your mother's husband dad. It's 100% your business and you didn't tell the kids any lies, so you didn't deserve to be punished. At some point, these kids will find out where babies come from. They will realize that babies are born nine months after conception. They will learn that a man your mom did not even know when she had you cannot possibly be your dad. Then they will wonder what else their parents are keeping from them. Do you acknowledge your dad's birthday? You should be able to celebrate him. Have these kids been to his grave? Your dad was important to you. It sounds like your mom would love you to forget him as soon as she did.